What's up 2K fans, Mr. NBA 2K Highlights on the mic and welcome to my commentary episode 3 I believe this is. Today I'm actually doing a request, uh, requested commentary. Feel free to request commentaries. Uh, normally I just come up with these on my own because you know I should know what you guys want anyways. But that doesn't mean you can't you know tell me what you want to hear still because I might take it to heart like I did this one. Because this is something that I have talked about on my Instagram before, but my opinion has changed just slightly on it. So I had somebody ask me if I think conferences should be eliminated in the NBA for the playoffs. And should playoffs just be... Oh shit, that's disgusting. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not editing that out, bro. I've done this too many times. Fuck this. But um, yeah, they have okay all right let me reset that fucked me up <laughs> somebody asked me do i think the playoff format should be changed from uh the top eight in every conference to uh top 16 teams and uh my short answer is yes but i'm still a little bit on the fence about it which has changed because when i talked about it on instagram i say completely let's go ahead and change it change a little bit on that but let's dive into it and uh what the benefits would be what uh the benefits wouldn't be you know how who it would hurt but i really believe it would help a lot more people than it would hurt so for one example i really want to go to today is the uh there's a couple of examples but the first one i'm going to go to is damian lillard Damian Lillard, you know, he was just snubbed from the All-Star team. I don't know if any of you saw his Instagram post because he took it down so quick, which he should have kept it up because he was just spitting, he was just, uh, sp you know, spitting real game. And he was basically thanking, you know, all the people who left him off the All-Star team because, you know, it's going to drive him to be even better. But, you know, the thing I look at Damian is, you know, it's not that he wasn't good. It's really that he's just a victim of this now, what I would call a broken system. And, uh, he didn't make the all-star team because he plays in the west and the west just has so many superstars and if it's not a superstar you know because there's different classifications you got superstar you got all-star star they have the they have all of those in the west and it is so hard to make a playoff team or a uh, all-star team it's so hard to make the all-star team in the west that some players you know who we regularly see there like tony parker weren't even considered for the all-star team this year that's how stacked they are it was just kind of one of those things where it's like oh oh well he didn't make it and then you know you got players like mike conley who you know could be an argument for an all-star team rajon rondo who this year he's not having his best season but you know he's been an all-star before but they are so packed with so many good players in that one conference that you know people become victims and Damian Lillard is one of them and um I think that the elimination of conferences you know not would only help for the playoffs but it would help alleviate this problem because the NBA is going about it the wrong way you know lately I hear the NBA say oh well you know maybe we're just gonna add uh more space for the all-star rosters no don't do that shit if you add more space for the god damn it I burped again you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and tell y'all right <laughs> I ate some damn skittles before this i had a whole bag of skittles and that shit is coming up during this commentary but i'm not about to pause and record every time so whatever <laughs> fuck it i burped twice just can't just keep a counter i might keep a counter on the video but um damn i don't lost my thought now oh my god oh yeah that's right i was talking about the all-star team <laughs> oh yeah okay i was saying no don't add more space because if you add more space for the uh all-star teams we're gonna know who's gonna make it every single year you know this year was pretty interesting because i really wanted to see you know kind of from both conferences who was gonna make it was cousins gonna make it you know who because we knew there was gonna be a lot of snubs that's kind of like softening it up you know if you add more spaces don't add more spaces because that's avoiding the problem the problem that you have is all the good players are in one conference well, and that's no disrespect to the east but all the stars and the all-stars are in the west you know when you look at the east the three of the eastern superstars are on one team for the cleveland cavaliers you know what i'm saying you got lebron got kevin love and Kyrie there now granted kevin love is having a down year because he's adjusting to playing power forward for lebron just like chris bosh has to you know he's really down this year but i think anybody who knows basketball still you know there's a lot of people out there talking shit about kevin love saying oh he was never a superstar shut up you don't know anything about basketball it's the same exact thing that happened to chris bosh he had to go down there he lost all his touches because he had to play a second fiddle or third fiddle actually to wade and lebron this is no different kevin love is the one guy who's not a ball handling scorer on that team so therefore he's lost his touches lebron and Kyrie are taking them Kyrie is busting 55 and 30 every other night lebron is busting 30 it's just natural when you have a big three the guy who doesn't handle the ball loses his touches so that's my little rant on that anyways but um yeah you know the elimination of conferences would definitely help something like that because when you look at lillard look who damian lillard had to beat out this year as far as just like guards for guard position he had to beat out players like clay thompson steph curry james harden chris paul 
he didn't have to be out Rondo or Tony Parker, but those are still all-star caliber players. Russell, Russell Westbrook is another all-star caliber player. I think I just named like five or six right there, and that was just like point guards, basically, uh, besides Klay Thompson. And um, I think we can all agree that if he was in the East, he would have probably made that team over Lowry. Let's be real. I mean, just, just because it's a popularity contest, and I think Lillard is probably slightly a little bit more popular than Kyle Lowry is. I don't know. That's just my opinion. I think he's better, too, you know. So, um, yeah, that's one That's one point uh, I think conferences could definitely be helped uh, by eliminating. My second example that I'm going to go to is the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, if you're an OKC fan, you know, my heart bleeds for you because y'all just got screwed, okay? Kevin Durant broke his foot before the season started. Russell Westbrook, you know, an, a fuck freak accident. A elbow hit his hand, <laughs> like, during the Clippers game. It broke his hand. You know, he got, it was just another freak accident. Y'all lost both of y'all stars for at least, I think, the first 14 games. And if you know anything about the Western Conference, you know that that is a gigantic setback. Today, as I speak, the OKC Thunder sit at uh, a perfect 500 record of 24 and 24. This is only good enough for 10th seed, okay? Right now, they are three games behind Phoenix. They don't control their own fate at all because, okay, three games might not sound like a lot, but just to put that in perspective, if Phoenix wins one night and OKC wins the same night, they don't make any ground. So in essence, they don't even control their own fate because Phoenix basically has to lose a lot and you guys have to win, and the OKC has to win a lot to make it. Now, granted, OKC has a beautiful chance to pass the New Orleans Pelicans because they have a home and home against them, which means they're going to play one game in uh, OKC, then they're going to play the very next night in, uh, 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 whatchamacallit, what do they play at? The Pelicans, New Orleans, yeah, New Orleans Pelicans, yeah. Um, if the OKC wins both of those games, which they should because they, I think they're a better team, really, uh, that would make up for the two-game difference, I think, you know, because that would, that would directly mean OKC wins and New Orleans Pelicans, they're directly correlated. One would win and one would lose each night. So they could pass the Pelicans and become one game behind Phoenix. So that's really big coming up this week. OKC has two huge games against them coming up this week. But anyways, <clears throat> that's not the point. OKC is 24 and 24, okay? If they were in the Eastern Conference, we wouldn't even be talking about this because that 24 and 24 record, that would have them in seventh place behind the Milwaukee Bucks. Can somebody please in the class raise their hand and tell me why where they play should affect how hard they have to play to make the playoffs? I'm not trying to soften it up. As a matter of fact, changing it to the top 16, uh, yeah, the top 16 teams would mean everybody would have to play hard every night because no one can slack. Um, I'm going to give you a good example. <clears throat> there, I've probably talked about this before, but uh, earlier this season, Cleveland was playing in Orlando. And the, this was back when the Cavs still sucked. Like, their record was average. You know, nobody was playing good basketball. And LeBron James had to be set off by Tobias Harris to go in to get out of what LeBron called his chill mode. Ha okay. That, at that point, I think Cleveland was like sixth in the East or something like that. They were playing really bad. But LeBron admitted he was in chill mode. Now, you know, whichever way you, this isn't the conversation about him, but if you're in the West, you can't even have a chill mode. If, if you're a playoff team, you can't have a chill mode. Not if you want to make the playoffs, but in the East, you can, because in the East, you can have a record right now of like 21 and 27. You can be pretty bad. No, scratch that. You could be 19 and 28 and still have a good chance of making the playoffs. As a matter of fact, realistically, you can have a record of about 17 and 30 before you start to talk about, okay, you know, this is your absolute last chance. You can be 17 and 30 right now and still make the playoffs in the Eastern uh, Conference. If you're 17 and 30 in the West, you're down there with Sacramento, which is out of the playoffs. They're pretty much 10 games behind Phoenix, okay? I just don't believe in having this disparity where, you know, half of the league has to play extremely hard every night and half of the league doesn't have to play very hard every night if they want to make it. Because in the East, let's be real, Miami's been losing all these games because they're not healthy. You know, some nights they just lose games that they shouldn't lose or whatever. Oh, but let me point to two specific teams in the East <clears throat> and why I think this should be changed, why this playoff format should probably be changed. Look at Charlotte and Detroit, okay? Now, I was pulling for Detroit because I think Detroit is a lot more interesting team than like Brooklyn and Charlotte, which is the two teams that are fighting for a playoff position down there. Okay, Detroit started this season one of the absolute worst basketball teams in the NBA. And I don't remember the exact record, but I do remember once they traded Josh Smith, they went on about a 10-game win streak. That win streak put them back in the playoff hunt. And today, even without Brandon Jennings, they are still in that playoff hunt. 
they are only about two and a half games back of Miami. So technically, they can still make it. Now, you know, of course, it's not as interesting anymore because Brandon Jennings, you know, the basketball gods just couldn't let Detroit be happy for one season. They sucked ever since they traded Chauncey Billups. And uh, this is the one positive thing they've had in like the last seven years. And on a freak accident, he tears his Achilles. We all knew it as soon as it happened. You know, as soon as he like took that big step and got on the floor, we knew it was a torn Achilles. I knew it was a torn Achilles. Brandon Jennings done for the season. And then that's going to screw them for the next season too because an Achilles injury first of all it has about a nine month recovery time and second of all even when you do come back from an Achilles injury unless your name is Kobe Bryant you're probably not going to be the same player anymore so Detroit you know I, my heart really really bleeds for y'all like I'm an NBA fan so I like to see interesting players period and uh, that broke my heart a little to see Jennings go down like that because I was really interested in seeing Detroit you know what they could do in the playoffs finally again and uh now that's like put on the back burner for years to come so but um Charlotte. Charlotte started this NBA season a terrible team too. They got on a little bit of a run. Kibba Walker is out with knee surgery right now. But check this out. They are seventh seed in the East now. You see how you they started. You don't even get that chance in the Western Conference right now. If you start terrible, that's it. Like you in like the first week or two in the West, if you start bad, that's it for you. You're done. Like, look at the Kings. The Kings looked like they were going to make the playoffs this year finally. DeMarcus Cousins was playing great. Then he caught viral meningitis, screwed the Kings out of the playoffs for good. Now they're back to their old ways. And plus, they made a dumb decision in firing that coach. I have no clue why they fired Mike Malone. I still don't know why that happened. But, um, okay, so that's my little rant about how that's going today. Um, another reason I think that this should definitely probably go to a top 16 format is because the playoffs would be so much more interesting. Let's take a look at what we've seen. If you watched last playoffs, you do know that they were, uh, this was probably like the best and most competitive playoffs in a while, but like more than half of that was shouldered by the Western Conference. When you look at it, okay, you know, in the East, did Toronto and, uh, Brooklyn have a good, um playoff series was it interesting yeah you know it was seven game series it was interesting but at the end of the day were Brooklyn and Toronto any kind of championship contenders no but then you go to the west and you look at that seven game series between Dallas and San Antonio I mean I think you, it's pretty fair to say you know the west had pretty much everybody in the west was competing for a championship OKC the Clippers if Dallas had to beat for San Antonio I don't see how you couldn't call them championship contenders even though they were AC I mean you beat San Antonio you know you you'd eliminate the, uh, the big bad boys of the west so um in the east you know, again then you had Miami in the Nets next round which was very very boring uh <laughs> that was boring Miami and the Bobcats was boring pretty much everything until Miami and Indiana was boring and Indiana is not even a factor this year because Paul George unfortunately broke his leg but um I think that we would have what we had last year but it would be doubled if it was top 16 because I know Miami doesn't exist anymore but wouldn't you guys have rather have seen like Miami versus Phoenix and Miami versus Portland in like the first and second round instead of watching Miami play the Bobcats because let's be real you know everyone looks at the surface and says oh it's so amazing that Miami made four NBA finals and I'm not hating on that success or nothing like that but let's be real every single year they made the finals in the east they only had one team to beat two of, one of those years uh was Boston which was uh when we made the Eastern Conference finals and that was only because Bosch was hurt had Bosch not have got hurt they would have beat us they would beat the fucking brakes off of us if they had Bosch that year we only had to beat them with Wade and James so that was that wasn't as hard back then but um then you know one then a couple of years they only had to beat the Pacers then one year the Bulls but there's always only one team for them to beat and they had all that talent on that team and uh you know again if this was top 16 we would have been looking at you know more of a challenge and it would have been more fair because when you look at what San Antonio had to deal with they had to even though they blew out their competition their competition was still better they were just possessed because they weren't going to be stopped in getting a uh, revenge on Miami or whatever but um their competition was definitely superior to what they had in the East. And I just think that, you know, this one is kind of self-explanatory. There would be a lot more of what we saw last year, not in just the West, you know, not just some interesting close games, but interesting close games that actually mean something. Because when we watched the Nets in Brooklyn series, we knew the Nets weren't going to the finals. We knew the, uh, the Raptors weren't going to the finals. Hell, when the Hawks took the Pacers, they almost beat them. We knew the Hawks weren't going to the finals. I mean, back then, come on now. So uh, I want to fast forward a little bit to this season. And uh, actually, you know, there was something else I wanted to say about the standings, too, that this is just completely ridiculous right here. So Golden State and the Atlanta Hawks are the top two teams in their respective conferences. 
today the Memphis Grizzlies are second in the West, right? And they are, follow along, this might get confusing. The Memphis Grizzlies are second in the West, seven game win streak. They are only three games behind the Golden State Warriors for first seed. Okay, now I scroll to the East. Atlanta Hawks are 49. The closest team to the Atlanta Hawks as I speak is the Toronto Raptors. They are seven games behind Atlanta for the first seed. Now, this is where you really got to follow along. I'm going to go back to the West and look at Dallas. Dallas right now sits in the sixth seed in the West. That's what it takes to be seven games behind the first con first team in the West. They're seven games behind Golden State, and they're in the sixth seed, okay? The second team in the East is seven games behind the first. That's how far the disparity is. That is absolutely ridiculous. That is the craziest thing I've ever seen. If I've, I've never seen anything like that in basketball. And the thing is, you know, people, you know, that I talk to, because I have some Facebook groups where, you know, I talk to people about basketball and stuff like that. And some people just say, oh, you know, it'll balance out. You know, this is just like how it goes. You know, we can't eliminate conferences. Sometimes the conference is good. Sometimes the conference is bad. But... When you look at it, we've been waiting for the Eastern Conference to balance out for like 10 years now. Let's be real. The year right now is 2015, okay? Let's rewind the clock back to 2007 when the Cleveland Cavaliers played the Spurs in the NBA Finals. Most people considered the NBA Finals to be that Western Conference Finals between the San Antonio Spurs and the Suns because that was the two heavyweights. And that showed because I was like in the sixth grade when that happened, but I, I will never forget the ass whooping San Antonio put on Cleveland. It wasn't even close. Like, San Antonio was just that much better. It was that bad. And, um, that, you know, Cleveland that year, they only had to beat the Nets, Washington, and then the Pistons were the one good team that they really had to beat that year. LeBron basically... Well, nah, if okay, that's a lie. If you go back and look at the numbers, LeBron didn't beat the Pistons by itself. He did have that thing where he scored like 20 straight points, but that's all anybody seems to remember. Go back and review the numbers of the Pistons uh, Cavaliers series. There, there was definitely contributions for some other players. But nonetheless, it was still amazing that they were able to beat the Pistons. But my point is the conferences still haven't balanced out. The closest that the conferences have been to balancing out have been 2010, all right? That was the most interesting year. That's um, I'm a Boston fan, and we were fourth in the East that year. And that year, there were three teams that could have won the NBA championship out of the East. There was the Orlando Magic, there was the Cleveland Cavaliers, and then there was the Boston Celtics. I honestly don't remember who was in front of us for the... Uh, what, what year is this? I'm talking about 2010, not Chicago. That wasn't Chicago. I would have to go back and look. I would have to look that up. I don't really know who the fourth team was because we were fourth. We were like one of the lowest seeds in a while to make the NBA Finals. Um, but that was the closest we've been to the conferences balancing out. And that really showed in 2009 when the Lakers won their uh, championship against the Orlando Magic. The only reason the Orlando Magic even made the finals that year was because Kevin Garnett had that bone spur in his knee and he was out. So the Celtics got eliminated in seven. Had the Celtics been healthy that year, they would have probably got back to the NBA Finals. And, you know, it's up for debate what would have happened between the Celtics and Lakers that year again. But you see what I'm saying, right? One powerhouse team fell out and then the weaker team made it and they got dominated by the Los Angeles Lakers. So I just say that to say, you know, to the people who are saying, oh, this is just natural, you know, it's going to balance out. We've been waiting for the conferences to balance out forever now. The whole time I've been watching basketball as a fan, I've been watching basketball since the year 2003, so 12 years now. And I really, really got into it in about like 2007, 2008. But as far as I know, and as far as I can remember, the East has always been considerably weaker than the West. So when is it a good time to change? You know, when is it time to just look at it and say, OK, maybe this just isn't working. Maybe we just need to go ahead, bite the bullet, get rid of conferences and start making it the top 16 teams in the playoffs, because that fixes two major problems. A, it fixes the fairness problem and B, the competition problem, because let's be real. OK, I'm going to read you guys something really, really depressing if you're a basketball fan. OK, you ready? This is some depressing shit. The first round of the Eastern Conference playoffs is going to feature, if it started today, the Atlanta Hawks and the Miami Heat, the Toronto Raptors, and the Charlotte Hornets. <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> then you would have the Washington Wizards and the Milwaukee Bucks, the Jabari Parker-less Milwaukee Bucks. Then the one interesting round you would have there is Chicago and Cleveland. Lord, oh my God, God forbid that Chicago and Cleveland actually ends up being in the first round. One of the two interesting teams is going to go out in the first round. Now, I'm not trying to sell the Washington Wizards short because they are an interesting team. 
But at the end of the day, I think anybody who knows basketball has looked at Cleveland and said, yeah, you know, the East is fucked now. Um, if you guys can remember, uh, go back to my first commentary. I said that when the Cleveland Cavaliers learn how to play basketball, the rest of the NBA is fucked. And, you know, this has more to do with the trades that they made, getting Mozgov, J.R. Smith, JR, or, uh, Iman Shumpert. It has a lot more to do with the trades that just happened than actually learning how to play basketball. Happened. Cleveland has the most talent in the NBA now. The suspense in the East is gone. They've won 11 straight. Now, you know, you can talk about all day about Atlanta being this great team who plays team basketball. But look, when you get to the, this is the difference. This is what separates the NFL from the NBA. In the NFL, the Atlanta Hawks might be able to win because you say, okay, all they have to do is beat Cleveland once, play the best game of their life and beat Cleveland. They have to beat Cleveland. You talk about Atlanta and Cleveland whenever they meet in the playoffs. They have to beat Cleveland four times, okay? That means, let me just let me just stop you before you get on me about the Hawks, okay? That means you're going to have to beat out Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, LeBron James, uh, J.R. Smith, Iman Shumpert, Mozgov, Marion, and hell, even Mike Miller if they need him. You're going to have to beat that basketball team four times. Just being honest, I don't see a team in the East, even though they sit at fifth today, I do not see a team in the East that's going to beat them four times. Um, a lot of you guys know I've never been a believer in the Toronto Raptors, just because simply for me, I don't believe in teams that don't have superstars, okay? And I can back that up by proof. Every single team that has won the championship in the past, like forever, has had at least one superstar who you could just give the ball to and tell them to go create. So if you go and look at the past teams, let's go ahead and look at the past champions. Last year, I would say the superstar that you have on the San Antonio Spurs, you could debate that between Tony Parker and Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard is more of a defensive superstar, but, you know, I, I wouldn't call Kawhi Leonard a superstar yet. I give that nod to Tony Parker, who's been hurt this year, so he hasn't really had a chance, whatever. Uh, obviously, the Heat always had three superstars in their championships. Uh, before the Heat won the championship, it was the Lakers, who obviously had Kobe Bryant. You can debate if Al Gasol was a superstar or not. I, I think he's more of an all-star, but he's a great, great player. You know, I don't sell him short. I know a lot of Laker fans sell him short, but I don't. Uh, before that was the Boston Celtics, who won the championship in uh, 08. And back then, yeah, KG was still a superstar. Paul Pierce, you know, they were pretty much still superstars. Before them again was the Spurs who that's when they were Tim Duncan was still a superstar back then uh, I'm doing this off the dome by the way I'm just naming chat I'm not even looking at a fucking reference right now I'm going off the dome right now so if I miss one forgive me um before the Spurs won the championship was the Heat with Dwayne Wade before the Heat I believe was the uh that was 2006 right was it the Spurs that year okay I'm going back uh, I'm going back a little bit far right now all that matters is what I just said. All those teams that have won a championship had a superstar. No team besides the Detroit Pistons in like 2004. That was the only team to win an NBA championship without a superstar. So I'm looking at the East going, okay, well, who has superstars? I think, I mean, I don't know. You can debate if you want to call John Wall a superstar right now. Derrick Rose is a superstar when he's healthy, but, it, you know, and when he's at 100%. I don't think he's at 100% yet. So the only team that even in the East that even really has superstars on it is Cleveland. I mean, Miami can't stay healthy for shit. Dwayne Wade and Bosch, you know, I think Dwayne Wade is still a star. He's still up there. I mean, you could debate if he's a superstar or not. The only team that really has superstars is Cleveland. And, um, yeah, Atlanta, Toronto, don't see that happening. Washington, I think that they're the future, but I don't think that they're beating Cleveland this year. I think they're missing a, uh, you know, they're missing a piece or two before they can beat a team like that. Chicago, they are the Pacers 2.0. What I mean by that, last year you watched the Indiana Pacers. They looked good. Paul George was a superstar. And then one day it just stopped. Paul, uh, what's that guy's name? Roy Hibbert couldn't grab a damn rebound. Um, they just started missing shots. No one could play basketball anymore. It's like the, the, the dudes from Space Jam just took their talent. That seems like that's what happened with the Bulls. The Bulls are losing. They don't forgot how to play defense. Um, nothing's going right for them right now. They don't even have Mike Dunleavy. He's been out for a long time now. That would help to have him. Um, so, yeah, I'm just looking at it. You know, if we were to have the top 16 teams in the playoffs this year, I think it would be a lot more interesting because, hold on real quick. Let me draw the line right here. Um... Wow, this is pretty unbelievable, actually, what I just found. I didn't even know this before I started this commentary, or else I would have brought it up before 25 minutes came up. The Cleveland Cavaliers, their 30 and 20 record would only have them in the eighth seed of the West right now. So, in. Oh, man. Oh, no, 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 no. My bad, my bad. No, that wouldn't even be like that. Oh, man. That is bad. Wow. I did not see this. If you're still listening, I didn't see this before I started this commentary. Um, 
Okay, you know, yeah, I was right. Yeah, I, okay, I got confused with the numbers right there. So yeah, the 30 and 20 record for Cleveland would butt Phoenix out and put them in the eighth seed of the West. If you were to do that today, I don't know. I feel like I'm confusing something. Whatever. Point remains. Top 16 teams, as you can see, I think we would have a lot more interesting matchups. Instead of seeing, you know, once Cleveland knocks Chicago off in the first round, instead of seeing them run over like Toronto and Atlanta and teams like that, you would see them playing teams like the Clippers, Houston, Portland. I feel like that would be a lot more of a challenge, just like I felt like for all those years for Miami, it would have been more of a challenge. So that's basically my last reason that I say eliminate the conferences. You know, uh, from a competition standpoint, it just makes a lot more sense. So, um... I'm going to go ahead and stop this right now because after this is the part where I just start ranting, basically, and I don't feel like doing that today. I've said everything I feel about this. Um, I probably should have looked at the standings a little bit more because I wanted to do some math right there. I was trying to do quick math in my head. didn't really work out, but whatever. Um, yeah, you know, leave your thoughts. Tell me what you think. Should the NBA eliminate conferences? And just, you know, because, I mean, this is the elephant in the room. You know, we're starting, you know, you can ignore it. But I even hear analysts, you know, it's slipping out of their mouth sometimes. The East is horrible. <laughs> the East is horrible. It hasn't balanced out. You know, it's been like this for a very, very long time now where the best team in the East only really has one team to beat before they get to the finals. Meanwhile, in the West, you know, you have to beat three good teams before you get to the finals. That's not really fair at all from an energy standpoint. Um, making the playoffs oh yeah that's the thing geography why do you know somebody in the comment section tell me this why in the world should geography affect you know how hard you have to play and who and who, who makes the playoff why should the phoenix suns and i'm not even a suns fan but why should the suns have missed the playoffs last year just because they were uh in the west just because they played in phoenix when they would have been third in the east i mean you know the nba can ignore this all they want but that makes no type of sense to be third your record would get you third place in the east but you can't even make you can't even play in the playoffs you don't qualify because of where you play to me that doesn't make sense and you know i mean you know the definition of insanity is waking up you know doing the same thing every day and expecting a different result 10 years people we've been waiting for the east to balance out it got close when the celtics you know you had the celtics and the heat it got close to balancing out it hasn't balanced out i mean let's be real the east has seen better days you know even just a few years ago when you had new york indiana well indiana wasn't good the same time as the celtics though i don't think i don't know we we got close but it hasn't balanced out yet so yeah anyways i'm getting into that rampart like i said um just leave your thoughts you know tell me what you think about everything i said okay see uh the playoff snubs you know would you like to see the conferences stay or you know are you still holding out hope that just one day you know we're gonna have this big draft and it's gonna there is you know big trades and stuff and the conferences are gonna e even out i mean even if they even out though that's one thing even if the conference even out that means the west is going to be weaker you know the west is going to be weaker because to even out technically what that would mean is a lot of the players that play in the west right now would have to come and play in the east so then the west isn't as strong as it is right now um but let's be real it's just not enough talent in the world to supply two comp 30 teams of basketball full like you have the west like you have all these like 12 13 good teams in the west there's just not enough talent on planet earth to balance out that many you know for that many good players to put them on basketball rosters and have like 30 teams like that, that can only have exist in my in my uh three kings in new york series like i have it where i have all the legends and you know fun fact you know just talking about video games for a second even that was hard to do to make like 28 teams uh with good players um in nba 2k 14 actually when i didn't have the ability to create players well that's why there was only 20 good teams last year instead of 30 in the three kings of new york season one there wasn't enough talent in the nba even with the legends there was not enough talent for me to uh, create you know all these competitive teams uh now there is because you know i've been able to create players you know i got smarter so now there is but there wasn't even enough talent for me to create you know more than about 20 teams last year so um yeah for the third time now i'm gonna try to end this leave your comments tell me what you think eliminate conferences or don't eliminate conferences where i stand i say yes eliminate them even though i know the nba isn't gonna do it but you know for all the reasons i said i believe they should so tell me what you think uh like comment subscribe if you enjoyed it and uh thanks for watching